it is such an honor to be here. I'm really excited. So I really wanted this to be an interactive, um, an interactive hour. So please, we're going to ask that you use the chat button and we actually chat with each other. Um, so first, I just want to say, hey, it's Friday, TGIF, right? So let's like totally get into the fact that we're here and we're here today on exploration of pleasure. How often do we just get spend an hour for pleasure, okay? And I hope at the end of today, you're gonna spend more time focused on pleasure because pleasure is your birthright. Life is here to be lived, to be celebrated. It's yet our intelligence actually gets in the way of our consciousness, our ego, our inner critics. They're powerful, nonstop voices that drag us down and direct so much of our behavior. So too our civilization, right? Meaning the desires of the powerful to manipulate and control how we should live and how we should behave. The rules of society sometimes can be constraining forces that really prevent us from living our authentic selves. So I'm here today to help you find your authentic self. We really do have the bandwidth to check into our own personal frequency, right? To tune in to our inner self and learn who we are, what makes us tick, who we want to be. And ideally, we stop resisting who we are and instead accept who we can be, who we are supposed to be, and live according to what we are here to bring to each other and to the planet. And if we could all surrender to our inner knowing of who we are, life might be more easy, more pleasurable. Imagine a world where we all could know our greatness and we could celebrate each other for that. And we can all just allow everybody to share their gifts with the world. So today I'm here to help you uncover a part of yourself that you may or may not know and help you more easily shine your light. Okay, that's my goal for today. Um, I really do want to make this as interactive as possible. So please use the Q&A and use the chat when I ask. But some guidelines, especially in the chat. And I think these are guidelines that can really be useful in work and in play. Sexuality play, ses play sessions, I think of as adult play. And they should always involve some level of a consent container and kind of like the rules for today. You could be married or with a person for 30 years, but tomorrow, Saturday night, your usual yes might be a no. And so each time you get together and play, in a sense, it's a new consent container. And when you set a consent container, I suggest you have these thought process as your guidelines. Always come with care, compassion, and curiosity. Leave judgment behind you, really. Be confidential. So today, if anyone opens up in the chat about something personal, this should be a confidential space. And they know that no identifying features are going to leave this space. And that should be the same when you have adult play. And then a big one is no unsolicited advice. Always ask consent first. May I give you advice? Are you looking for advice? May I touch you in this way? May I talk to you in this way? Always ask and then actually listen for their response. As a physician, I've been raised to give advice. As a parent, I've been raised to give advice. And you know what? A lot of times it's unwanted. And I need to retrain my brain to only give advice when it's asked for. And so all of us should have a beautiful consent con container with work partners, play partners, and especially, again, for today, care, compassion, curiosity, confidentiality, and consent. And this is ideally a non-judgment space, okay? I am non-judgmental. And remember that no means no. So if someone doesn't want advice, eh, ixnay the advice. Don't give it. So before we go on, in terms of today's little chat, I want to get out of our head, out of my head, out of your head, and back in our full body, 
Okay. So I invite you to practice a pleasure first practice. And when I coach every session, we start with pleasure first. And it really helps us get out of our heads and back into our bodies. And when I talk about the bodies, I actually talk about four different bodies. We have a mind body, nonstop thoughts. We have a heart body. We're always feeling our emotions and our electromagnetic uh, energy is actually bigger from the heart than the brain. It really is our first brain. We have a physical body that houses us and moves us. And then we have this energetic body that surrounds us. These electric potentials that connect all of our cells through our own nervous systems and then connect through our five senses with everything around us, our biosphere, all the inanimate and animate objects on this earth, okay? Our energetic body is like our own personal cell tower, always sending and receiving energy signals. And just a reminder that we, for every experience in life, you have an image, you have a thought, you have an emotion, and you have a body sensation. So those are our four bodies that we're gonna walk around with, okay? So I invite you now, to just look at your environment. Where are you right now? What images are you seeing? Just notice where you are. Notice the room that you're in. And I invite you if you choose to gently close your eyes and maybe there are some smells that you start to notice. Perhaps there's a leftover taste in your mouth or your mouth is watering. Are there sounds other than my voice that you might hear in the background? Just notice all these energy signals converging on your body. And then start to notice your breath. Feel the gentle in and out of your breath. The breath has its own sound. It has its own vibration. Your breath is your proof that you are alive. And your breath is always with you from birth until death. Notice that if you slow down your breath, you might slow your nervous system down. If your exhale is longer than your inhale, your body starts to relax. Perhaps it's the middle of the day and you're falling asleep listening to my monotonous voice and you wanna wake yourself up. You can staccato your breath and wake yourself up. So play with your breath, slow, medium, fast. Find the breath that is right for you in this moment. Find the breath that brings you pleasure. Find the breath that makes you smile. And just settle into that breath. And from here, I invite you to play with touch. So we're gonna start by taking your two hands, bring them together in front of your face, and just Feel the energy from your hands in front of your face. Notice if there's warmth. Notice the energy coming off your hands. And notice perhaps how the rest of your body responds to your hands being in front of your face. And maybe move your hands around the sides of your face, up and over and the tops of your head and the scalp and around. And you could be as far away and bring the energy in. You could feel just the tips of your hair. You could twiddle your fingers and just touch, but not really. Just 
barely touch your face, your hair, maybe your arms. Just play with this gentle non-touch and notice information or how that sits in your body. This touch that's not really touching the skin. And from this touch, we're gonna move to a more real touch, a massage touch. And I'd like you to gently massage your body and just feel, what does it feel like to hug yourself? What does it feel like to massage your arms and your wrists and your hands and your fingers? And just be aware, it's all information. It's all information. You're learning about what your body likes today. And don't forget to breathe. Keep up with your breath. Keep breathing in and out in whatever rhythm you like. And now I'm going to ask you to ask your body which of those many touches it would like to experience. Perhaps you can combine different touches. Now, I'd like you to go grab a pen and paper, if you will, because I'd like this to be interactive. Or you could just use the chat button, but it'd be nice for you to take some notes for yourself, come back to the room, and tell me and yourself, which touch did you find most pleasurable? Did you like the light touch, which was barely, barely touching? Did you like massage? Did you like the light massage or the heavier massage? How about the scratches, the pinches, the hair pulling, the slaps? Or did your body like all of them and wanted to do all of them? And I'd like you also to notice which breath worked better for you today. Was it a slow, gentle inhale and exhale? or more of a staccato. So I wanna ask you, and again, you can write this in your, in your notes. When it comes to sex, what do you prefer? And I'm gonna give you a list of things and perhaps you start writing them down. Do you prefer eye gazing? Slowly looking into another's eyes and really trying to see their soul. Thank you, Paul, for noticing great insight. Different parts of your body like different kinds of touch. That's fabulous. Somebody noticed how powerful non-touch is. Yes, it's amazing how that energetic body can feel. So let's go. I'm going to continue. Keep writing in the chat. I think it's great. When it comes to sex, do you prefer eye gazing? Do you prefer planning an outing or planning a date? to perhaps going on the date? Do you like getting ready for your date? Do you get pleasure from really great foods, tasting all different foods, different wines, different spirits, like a sommelier or a, you know, a foodie? Is that what gives you pleasure? Again, do you love massage? Do you like shiatsu or Swedish or Thai? Do you like candles, music, just the right em environment and ambiance? Do you just like naked bodies or porn? Like just bring it on, that's what you want. How about playing dress up or playing pretend? Do you like being in control? Do you like letting go and having a partner make all the decisions and let them be in control? Do you like getting away with things and being a little bit naughty? And once again, 
Is it really hard for you to choose one versus the other of these choices? Would you rather just play with all of them, different days and different times? So I invite you to kind of think about that and write what you think. And now on the same piece of paper, or maybe on the back of the paper, I want you to divide the paper into four quadrants. And on your top left, I want you to write the word vanilla. And on the top right, write the word you. On the bottom left, put taboo or things you might like to try. And then on the bottom right, once you've filled out the top, the other three quadrants, I want you to write what are the five reasons that you haven't yet tried what might be in that I want to try but haven't tried yet. I want you to think about what's holding you back. And I'm going to sit for just or wait for a few minutes. I'll give you five minutes for you guys to fill that out. So again, top left, vanilla. Top right, you. Bottom left, pushing your edges. Bottom right, why haven't you pushed your edges? What's holding you back? And there are no right or wrong answers here. Moreover, nobody's looking over your shoulder and you're not going to get graded. This is not school. And I remind people, right, most of us have not gotten a primary education on sex, much less continuing education. Most of us learn things from friends, family, maybe books, maybe therapists. But our society throws sex at us, but doesn't really teach it. So let's play with learning about it. All right. So again, these are things for you just to play with and to look. Nobody's grading it. I would like if anybody wants to share, what are the things that hold you back? Why did you sign up to learn more about sex? What intrigued you about learning about eroticism and how you can put it into your life? So for me, I want to remind you, I want you to think about what in your sex life is good and right, and what in your sex life do you want more of, okay? I want you to remember that you, as a conscious being of choice and an adult individual, you really get to design your life inside and outside the bedroom. And if you can figure out what lights you up, then you could get more out of life, in and out of the bedroom. And if you do this, if you know how to turn yourself on and what makes you smile, what gives you pleasure, you're gonna go through life being more fully alive and more present in your day-to-day -day life. So I like to think of life like a bank account. Stress, hard times, those are the withdrawals. And you certainly don't need to schedule or plan for them because life gives you them all the time, right? They just happen. Moreover, as humans, we are wired to remember the negatives and the stress, but we need eight positives to balance one stressful event is what they say. So if we don't always want to be living on credit with all these withdrawals of stressful life, we actually have to schedule pleasure to fully charge ourselves up and light ourselves up so we're not living in the red, we're not bankrupt, right? So we must schedule pleasure into our day every day. Pleasure are the deposits of positive energy into your bank account of life. And remember, we actually are energetic beings and all energetic stuff, like every appliance you ever buy, Number one, it works better if you unplug it occasionally. And all energetic devices work better and go further and longer when they're fully charged. So pleasure is how you in your body can recharge and reboot. 
but how do you personally recharge and reboot? And so that's what I'm here to work on today. Okay, so ghosts in the bedroom. So perhaps there's, you know, there's communication issues um, and perhaps we're not talking the same language. And that's what the erotic blueprints are, kind of like there are love languages and Enneagrams and Myers-Briggs. We all speak a slightly different language. And sometimes communication is better when we understand how to talk the other person's language, right? And a lot of people have fear of intimacy and tr struggle in relationships and struggle with communication. So hopefully what we talk about, I'm gonna talk about right now with the erotic blueprints is a way to understand yourself and a way to understand how you access pleasure and then how to talk to others to see empathically with curiosity how they access pleasure and figure out a way to come together and meet in the middle. So the erotic blueprints are a system to help determine how your nervous system best accesses pleasure. Okay. So who liked barely being touched, that light touch of non-touch? Who needs space and time to warm up? Who is very, very sensitive to other people and to energy in general? Who really likes eye gazing? playing with their breath, perhaps planning the party or planning the date as much or as more than the actual date, like the date's actually a letdown sometimes. Who likes getting so deep that you're seeing into another soul? Right, that those folks typically have a very high energetic blueprint. And we don't usually talk about this. People don't understand energetic orgasms or energy at all, but it's real. And the energetic, if they're in a sexual relationship and someone goes for their genitalia before they're fully relaxed into their body and into their connection with another human being, their physical body may get short-circuited, turned off, and you could never turn them on. So understanding how to gently approach another human being energetically and how to actually have them settle into their body is a key skill that we talk about with the blueprints. The sensual is someone who lives in their senses. They delight in all things, five senses. I think about them having a direct beeline to their heart. They delight in being very close to someone else where the energetic needs space. They like massage. They like close touch. They like beautiful images and art. They love food, maybe wine and spirits. They're very sensitive to their environment. The ambiance and their environment needs to be perfect. Their clothing needs to be just right. The sheets need to be comfortable. It's like their senses have a direct hotline to their heart. Okay. They need to be fully relaxed and in the right environment to be comfortable enough to get turned on and have sex. Now, superpowers of the energetic and the sensuals, they can actually orgasm without even being touched. If you've ever listened to a foodie described a five-star Michelin restaurant, they're actually orgasmically in pleasure. There are folks who have such a deep connection with the cosmos or another human being, their whole body feels on fire. So these are really important, but these folks can also really get short-circuited easily. The sexual blueprint, these folks get turned on by naked bodies, by what we in Western society call sex. They don't get the same pleasure that these folks get from a beautiful sunset. Imagine you go out on a date and you're an energetic and you're taking in the entire environment. You're sensual, so you're loving the food, you're loving the wine. You're like, your night is complete by the time you get home and your partner is a sexual and all of that was boring foreplay. It did not light them up. For them, sex and orgasm is air, food, and water. It's how they plug in and they 
really actually need orgasm. They could have three hours of lovemaking. If there was not an orgasm at the end, it was a failure. It was, it was unsuccessful. They did not get the full pleasure that they need. They really need their physical body to be fully satisfied. The kinky blueprint lives in their head, right? They actually have top-down sex. They plan their party in a sense. They plan their event. They choose emotionally who they're going to play with. They design it all out. Maybe they have a movie script or something in their mind. And then finally, they get to the nitty gritty physically. These are folks who play in the mind body. They also like get totally turned on by anything that is pushing boundaries and taboo. Okay. So again, what their boundaries are can be very different from individual to individual, but they get turned on by, the, by breaking the rules. These are your creatives, your disruptors, but depending on their rules depends on how far they push the boundaries. So these are people who um, play with sensations like pinching, slapping, pulling hair, things that you don't intuit might be intimate touches. And yet those can really make them feel alive. They, um, they, there's a thing called psychological kink where they're playing with role plays and playing with who's in control, right? They might truly play with costumes. They might get stuck. They may play with control and surrender roles, right? And for a day, just like to be told what to do. Um, they may like their partner to take control or they may like to control and they are very much into that kind of role play. Um, they may be into sensation play. So again, these are folks who play in their mind and play with different ways to get turned on and often with the taboo. Now, if they grew up in a very strict household, like I said, taboo for them could be sex before marriage. And then they wonder after they get married why they're not turned on anymore because all of a sudden the taboo was removed and they have to maybe push their edges a little further. But they may be, have been brought up in a society where they've been taught that sex is bad and dirty and they're not comfortable with their own boundaries because they have guilt and shame. And that is sometimes built in as a, as a roadblock for everybody with sex, but especially, especially people perhaps who have a little more of the kinky mind game stuff. And finally, the shapeshifter. This blueprint can really play in any of these playgrounds and get, and get pleasure from any kind of these playgrounds. But more than that, they need to play. They need the variety. They get bored playing and doing the same thing over and over again. So they need to, one day they might, let's play with all different fun sensations like a, a, um, a sensual. And another day they may want to play with things that are taboo. Another day they may want to just have garden variety porn like sex. And another day they may want to sit and just stare at the sun and enjoy um, the energy of the world, right? So they need it all to feel fulfill, fully fulfilled. So I ask you, um, do you understand yourself a touch better? Do you see yourself in any of these definitions? And do you see how your play partner may actually be different? So there are five erotic blueprints. The erotic blueprints are the energetic, um, the sensual, the sexual, yeah, someone got it, the kinky and the shapeshifter. Um, and at the end, or if you go to the top of the chat, I'm gonna offer and I can share with you a little blueprint quiz that you can take if you email me. Um, so I'm gonna ask, we have a little bit more time and I have one more thing that I'd like to play with you and stuff, but I'm just gonna ask you, do you understand yourself a touch better? Do you understand your partner better? Have you typically had consent conversations with what's on the table and what's off the table, which might help you relax in your nervous system so that you know that whatever you say no to is a real no and you don't have to be nervous in the bedroom? And I just remind you 
Do you schedule time to plan your play parties with your partner, right? Think about on a Saturday night, how many of you would just randomly go to a movie theater and whatever they're showing that night, you're going to see. Most of us look up in advance what movie they want to see and then figure out what movie theater they're going to go to to watch the movie they want to watch. And yet how many of us don't take the time to sit with our partner and actually plan our place, our play time together? Okay, let's schedule some intimate time to get to know each other better. Are we going to play with sensual play tonight? Or are we going to have a sexual outing? Are we going to play kinky? Or are we going to play energetic? Are we going to eye gaze for half an hour before we get started? Who's going to touch whom first? What toys might you want to bring to the bedroom? And by toys, it could be candles. It could be incense. It could be costumes. It could be ropes. Right? So learning how to speak your blueprint. Maybe you, if you're an energetic, you're going to use different words like yoni and the universe and tantra. And if you're sexual, you're going to say, come on, let's just do it in the bedroom. So playing with different words, spending time with your partner, what words turn them on? What words turn them off? What tone of voice turns you on? What tone of voice turns you off? Does it change whether you're fully aroused or just getting started? So again, having these conversations, planning your sessions, learning, and again, you can have a quote unquote play session that doesn't involve the bedroom. You can take yourself on a date, have an amazing night of sensuality. Have an amazing night of sexual sexuality. Play with yourself. Learn what touches you like. So what I'd like to do for this last part is, um, what I'd like to do for this last part, it's it's a kind of different thing, but it might it might play well with all of you. So I'm going to ask you again, just to get quiet and calm. Close your eyes and imagine for you a perfect sexual play session. What thoughts come up? What images come up? Emotions, body sensations. I want you to experience in your brain that perfect sexual indulgence day for you. Really feel it, magnify it, intensify it, dramatize it, make it really, really big, make it totally personal. This is how you are getting pleasure for you. And I'm gonna assume you're all there that you've figured out this great sexual indulgence day for you. And what I'd like you to do is now check in with your body and start to notice where in your body do you feel this? Where is the energy residing? Now imagine that you notice this energy in this part of your body. And notice, does it have a shape? Or a size? Or a color? How light or heavy is it? How long has this energy been there? This sensation. And if, you're, if this is hard for you to do, just imagine if it had a color, what color would it be? And if it had a shape, what shape would it be? This is an aspect of you. And as a part of you, it always wants what's best for you. And so I'm going to take you on a little ride to find out what this aspect really wants for you. What goal does it have for you? 
this energy that's sitting in your body, this sexual energy, we're going to ask it to communicate with us. So turn towards this energy, this aspect of you and say, hey, aspect, what goal do you have that you want for me? And I want you to just let whatever bubbles up in your head or in your body, let it come up to the surface. And when you figure out what goal it has for you, go into your imagination and imagine this goal fulfilled. So maybe it wants pure relaxation. Maybe it wants a better orgasm. Maybe it wants close connection, intimacy. And go ahead and see that that whatever goal this aspect had for you, see it come true. Feel it in your imagination. And celebrate that you've reached this goal in your mind's eye. And now turn towards your aspect again and say, hey, aspect, now that we've achieved this first goal in the way you wanted it, what's a higher goal? What's another goal that you want from me? And again, whatever bubbles up, don't spend a lot of time thinking of it on it. Something usually pops into your body or in your head. And go ahead and achieve that goal. So again, in your mind's eye, go ahead and achieve the next goal. See it done. Dive into this goal. Manifest whatever it is you want. Again, it's all in your imagination, so it always can come true. And celebrate that you've reached this next goal. And once more, ask your aspect, hey, aspect, now that we've achieved this goal in the way you wanted it, what's an even higher, more spiritual goal that you might want from me? And again, you might be seeing love, peace, joy, acceptance. I don't know what goals are coming up for you, but those are ones that might come up. And once more, go into your mind's eye. Create a situation where that goal is 100% achieved. And celebrate achieving this goal. We're gonna go once more. Ask your aspect if there's any other higher goals that it has for you today. And sometimes we get to a place where we're just fully relaxed into nothingness or oneness, total peace, total love. And maybe you're there. So I invite you to just sit in this goal or sit in this nothingness. Allow this beautiful feeling of love or peace, oneness, nothingness, whatever's coming up for you. Allow that to expand out and fill all your cells. And let it expand from the top of your From the top of your head to the bottom of your feet, from the right to the left, front to back, all the way into infinity, above, below, to the right, to the left, in front and behind. And feel this oneness. 
and allow some beautiful divine light to come in through the top of your head and fill your body so that you know that this is achievable. Feel this divine white light filling you up and taking you to a pleasure spot that is one with the universe. And realize that you did this all by yourself. It's possible for everyone. So I invite you to come back to the room and ask yourself, could you put more pleasure into your everyday life? And if you did, if you put more pleasure and care into bringing excitement back into your everyday life and perhaps with a partner, how could you up-level your life? How good would you feel every day? So I hope this was enjoyable and instructive. And many of you sent me emails. I will respond to all of you later today. Thank you. It was a pleasure.